Hi guys, in this video we are going to be studying uh, the exchange rate policy of the government and how the government can manipulate and alter the exchange rate in order to achieve its macroeconomic objectives. Primarily, the government alters exchange rate in order to influence aggregate demand and we will see that in today's video. So for example, first of all, exchange rate is a type of monetary policy, alright? Exchange rate is one form of monetary policy and under exchange rate policy there are two regimes. Either the government can revalue the currency or the government can devalue the currency. Now whether it revalues the currency or whether it devalues the currency, there are two methods that the government is going to use or the state bank is going to use in order to either revalue or devalue. That is it uses two tools. First of all, it uses the interest rates and secondly it uses the gold and its foreign currency reserves and we'll just see in today's video how it does that. Okay. So for example, let's assume that the balance of trade position of the economy is not going good and the BOT that is the balance of trade is in a deficit. Number two, the unemployment is rising and the export industry is especially negatively affected. And for example, the economy is going through an, a recession or an economic downturn and the living standards are declining. So first of all, the balance of trade position is in a state of deficit, then the unemployment is rising, the export industry is suffering, the recession is going on right and the living standards are falling. So we can say that the economic position of, or the economic position so we can say that the economic position is not good all right so in this case what the government is going to do is that the government will devalue the currency that is it is going to devalue the exchange rate now you know that exchange rate of an economy is basically affecting the aggregate demand right and when the exchange rate affects the aggregate demand it basically ex affects the export and the import prices and policy makers actually exploit this connection they take advantage of this connection by artificially you guys need to understand this very carefully the policy makers the state bank and the government will artificially they will exploit this connection they will exploit this connection by artificially increasing or decreasing the exchange rate hence we can say that the artificial increase or decrease in exchange rate is basically known as devaluation or revaluation when the government devalues the currency, it artificially reduces the value of the currency and when the government revalues the currency, it artificially by purposely increases and manipulates the currency by increasing its value. Hence we can say that devaluation or revaluation does not take place in a free floating exchange rate system, it only takes place in a managed float or in a fixed exchange rate system. So what the government does is that when it revalues or devalues the currency, it uh, so what happens is that whenever the government revalues or devalues the currency, it fixes the exchange rate at a certain particular value and this happens in a fixed exchange rate system. Now, so now in today's video, we're going to be studying about currency devaluation. Now we know that a currency devaluation is a method when the government is going to reduce the value of the currency. And why does the government fixes the exchange rate? Why it may devalue? One of the reasons could be that since we know that a free floating exchange rate is constantly either increasing or decreasing in value, hence it basically it reduces the economic certainty for exporters and importers. In a free floating exchange rate, we know that the economic certainty for exporters and importers is highly fluctuating. It is it becomes an uncertain situation it becomes an uncertain market condition for exporters and importers and it's not good for them so what the government can do is that the government fixes the exchange rate at a certain value and does not allows this allows it to either go above or below that particular fixed value and this is known as a fixed exchange rate system now whatever the government fixes whatever exchange rate whatever the existing exchange rate is if it reduces the value of the exchange rate and fixes at that value it's known as a devaluation or in or vice versa if it increases the value it's known as revaluation so now let's jump down to what are the two methods that the government will use in order to devalue the currency first let's check the interest rate now what the government will do is that it is going to reduce the exchange rate why because when the government will reduce the exchange rate it will have two effects first of all it reduces the cost of borrowing and as a result of that this is going to increase the money supply in the economy because when the cost of borrowing will fall people will borrow more money and when people will borrow more money the consumer expenditure in the economy will rise which will which will result into an increase in imports 
and as a result the supply of the local currency that is the supply of the international currency will rise because that will actually be used that domestic currency will be used to buy the foreign currency so that it can actually result into buying more imported products because the domestic currency will buy the foreign currency so that it can increase the purchase of imports and as a result of this the value of the currency will fall since supply of the domestic currency rises in the market in the forex market now this is first way the other effect of an increase of a reduction in interest rate is that a decline in the interest rate also has the effect of reducing the hot money inflows now the the investors in the other countries in overseas markets invest in other in other bank accounts they invest in other countries banks because they see that the interest rates are rising now if they see that the interest rates have fallen they will withdraw that investment they will reduce that foreign investment in the form of hot money inflows and they will withdraw back that investment which will result into a reduction in the demand for domestic currency hence what is going to happen is that the demand for domestic currency is going to decline and since the demand for domestic currency is going to decline it is going to reduce the value of domestic currency in the market resulting into a currency devaluation so these are two effects first effect is either imports will rise because the supply of the currency will rise because why because you know more money supply hence resulting into more imports number two a decline in interest rates this will reduce the hot money inflows Uh, because it becomes less attractive for foreign investors hence uh, this reduces the demand for currency reducing currency's value hence resulting into devaluation now one thing students you need to make sure is that you have to because here the government is artificially reducing the value of the currency please make sure that you do not use the word depreciation or appreciation depreciation or appreciation the word of depreciation of currency or appreciation of currency is used only in a floating exchange rate system where the demand and supply of the currency changes due to automatic conditions in demand and supply so in a depreciation of the currency it is automatically influencing or reducing the value and in an appreciation the currency's value rises automatically due to changes in demand and supply of the currency here the government is forcefully or artificially manipulating the currency's uh, currency's international value by devaluing it right so you will use the word devaluation although the word devaluation has the same effect of depreciation but the word devaluation will be used because the devaluation will automatically indicate everyone that this was done by the government another thing, another way that the government will devalue the currency is by buying foreign currency now what the government will do is it will use the state bank will use domestic currency to buy foreign currency it will sell the domestic currency in the market and by selling the domestic currency it will use that domestic currency to buy foreign currency now what will happen is that this will increase the supply of the local currency hence reducing its value resulting into a currency devaluation right so the state bank sells its own domestic currency in the forex market and buys back the and buys the foreign currency which increases the supply of local currency hence resulting into a devaluation now moving forward moving forward uh now let's see what are some of the effects of devaluation now first of all a devaluation will result into an increase in the exports why your export revenues will increase why because when the when the currency devalues so the value of the currency falls in the international market now that results into exports becoming cheaper because export prices then fall and if the ped for exports is elastic this will result into an increase in export volume a small devaluation a small devaluation will result into an increase in the volume of exports hence resulting into an increase in the total export revenues because when the currency devalues itself it becomes cheaper for the foreign currency to buy our local domestic currency hence you know they may buy uh, they may consume or import more from us and the, as a result of that the export volume rises which results into an increase in export revenues as well all right so for example let me give you an example so for example if if uh, for instance let's say you know um, 1 dollar is worth maybe 200 rupees and the government of usa devalues the currency by by reducing the value of dollars and the value of dollars falls from 1 dollar to let's say 100 rupees now this results into a devaluation of dollar right now it becomes cheaper for pakistani people and pakistani firms to buy or import goods from usa because now they only have to pay 100 rupees to buy the same 1 dollar worth of goods so as a result of that they might buy uh, more from usa and as a result 
what's going to happen is that USA will export more to Pakistan, resulting into a rise in export volume and a rise in export revenues. All right. The second effect would be that the imports will fall as well. Why? Because now imports have become artificially expensive. Imports have become artificial. Please make sure that you don't use the words "import" have become uncompetitive. Imports have not become uncompetitive. In fact, they have become artificially expensive. The, why I tell you the word "uncompetitive" is mostly used in order to denote inefficiency, in order to denote a rise in cost of production. The thing is that if dollar devalues against rupees. so basically the pakistani in uh, producers are not producing the goods at a high cost they are still producing the goods at a low cost the problem is that the currency or the dollar has devalued to an extent that it has made the imported products artificially expensive because now 1 dollar can only buy 100 rupees so if you want to buy 200 rupees worth of pakistani goods then you need to pay 2 dollars for it right so it's not pakistan's fault it's basically the devaluation of currency that has made the imports artificially expensive so so the thing is that if pd for imports is elastic the import volume is going to fall and hence that is going to result into a, a fall in import expenditure and what is going to be the effect of that the simple effect of that would be that it will improve the balance of trade position on the current account and as a result of that the employment will rise the gdp will rise and it might help the economy to get out of recession so it so this exchange rate policy guys may be used as a form of an expansionary monetary policy you can say because a lot of economists argue that uh, exchange rate policy is part of is part of monetary policy as well so it results into a greater positive effect in the acha one more thing one more thing is that if if international trade contributes to the country's economy right it majorly contributes to the country's gdp employment and economy then devaluation might prove to be very successful in actually boosting aggregate demand and bringing the economy out of recession and this is a very strong evaluation point that whether devaluation will be successful or not actually depends on how how much the country's economy is dependent on international trade and how much the country's economy is dependent on its exports and imports and if exports is a major factor in country's gdp then devaluation will actually actually increase the export revenues and volume helping the export industry to a very significantly large extent a good evaluation point to make in exams however however there's also uh, another point that you can make is that everything just seems positive here but not everything is as positive as it looks because a devaluation might also result into imported inflation because as imports get expensive but what about key raw materials guys key raw materials are expensive they become they have now become expensive and if you are importing those key raw materials at an expensive rate uh at an artificially expensive rate due to due to devaluation the cost of production will rise resulting into cost push inflation and this will only happen if the demand for key raw materials is inelastic all right so these are strong points that you can make in the exam so today's video was on devaluation make sure to watch my next video that will be on revaluation till then take care